What's up everybody, Steven C. Killer here. It's time for a new reaction video. But before that, 75% of you guys watching are not subscribed. Now recently, I was able to obtain the silver play button because we hit 100,000 subscribers. Now I'm pushing myself forward even further. We're going for 300,000 subscribers. We can't hit this goal if you're not part of this community, so hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Join the Discord so you don't miss out on any of my videos when I go live on Twitch, live on YouTube, or I upload a video. Links in the description. Don't forget, I do want to upgrade from silver to gold at one point. So help me out today and hit that subscribe button. Now let's get into the video. What's up everybody, Steven Zekiel, bringing another reaction. Now today, we're checking out another video by the Game Theorist channel. Now, Game Theory is always bringing us interesting things, creepypasta-esque videos on the games in the, in the realm of creepiness. Now, I kid you not, I woke up today, and honestly it was a little bit of yesterday, I've been seeing a lot of people post videos based off of a game I'm assuming is called Welcome Home. I have no idea of anything about it. But this is in that same realm of like Five Nights at Freddy's, Poppy Playtime, and a bunch of other indie horror-esque things that I'm assuming this is horror. And it's picking up like wildfire. So we're checking out this video called There's No Place Like Home, um, based off of the Welcome Home game that Game Theory is uploaded. Now this just uploaded a day ago, and already this video has well over 1.8 million views, and it's number 9 on trending. So we're checking out this video. I have no idea, no concept of what this is all about. And if there's videos or animations, because there have been a few on my feed when it comes to reaction recommendations and a bunch of other stuff. If you have ideas, comment down below. Join the Discord and post them in the reaction ideas section over there on the Discord. I may try to check out more of these soon since it's popular and a lot of people are talking about it. And I'm just generally interested. And if it might be something I might in be interested in to playing, I may look into it in the future. Uh, but that just all depends on your guys' support in this video and everything else. Now let's get into this video and enjoy it right now. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Oh Would God. Could you be my? Would you be my? I knew this had would that same be, feel of creepy ness Won't you be my baby? Alrighty then. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that hopes to make this day a special day by just being itself. And you can make my day very special by gently and kindly tapping that subscribe button. You know, that original quote is nothing short of iconic. Attributed to one man in particular, Fred Rogers, host of the show Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. No single man has okay, done so I was, much for Okay, I, I was about to say, that this feels like this is a kind of a creepy pasta parody of that guy's show. It's been a while since I've I've seen this or anything like I just couldn't remember the name. Children's Entertainment or Red Knit Cardigan Sweaters. I think it's fairly safe to say that every kid who grew up between 1968 and 2001 are at least passingly familiar with his work. An educational show hosted Me? on PBS that encouraged respect, compassion, kindness, integrity, and humility. It was simple, I watched a it couple was heartwarming, and it became one kid. of the longest running kid shows of all time. Bested only by Sesame Street in 2003. But True. when you make an impact on kids' lives, inevitably something strange happens when those kids grow up. They begin to explore their nostalgia, but they give it a new twist to transform it into something original. And nowhere else is that more true than here on the internet, where everything gets thrown Very into the pop culture true. grinder to be remixed and melted together until something inevitably pops out at the other end. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's evil, and sometimes <laughs> it's welcome home. The See, I knew it. This is gonna be in that same realm like Bendy the Ink Machine, uh, the, the fucking train game, uh, god damn it, I'm already forgetting, uh, Choo Choo Charles, uh, somewhere around that area of, like, creepiness. Just based off how the thumbnail looked for Game Theory and some of the things I've seen... Uh, recommended to me on YouTube recently. Lead a spooky craze to capture the imagination of the internet. If this Will this be a game you guys want me to try playing? And if it's a recent... Like, since it might be a most likely a recent game, maybe I might stream it like I do with, like, Poppy and, and FNAF in the future. Uh, 
maybe I'll stream it on, on YouTube or something. If not, I'll possibly maybe check it out and stream it on Twitch. Follow me on Twitch. This hasn't been flooding your content feed lately. I'd be surprised. It has been everywhere. That's what I'm reason. saying. The premise behind it all is that this is a website dedicated to recovering pieces of lost media from an old 70s show called, fittingly enough, Welcome Home, a kid's educational series that suddenly went off the air and disappeared. Even its production company went completely silent. In that way, it's very reminiscent of Hello Puppets, if you happen to remember that one. As we explore the website, we can learn more about the residents of the neighborhood called home. And it's your typical like, I've children's only been seeing stuff for like the roster. last couple People days. People like Grumpy at, Frank, at Joyful Julie, Goofy but Streetwise Barnaby. But the most important character is the lead, Wally Darling. A character who's one part Mr. Rogers, one part Sesame Street, and with just a dash of Bob Ross thrown in. Because the internet do what the internet... <laughs> it is basically a fusion of all three of those things. That's perfect. Gonna do. Exploring the website, we learned that episodes of the show would revolve around Wally learning a lesson, going on adventures, and drawing and painting with viewers. It all sounds quite idyllic, really. And it is, at least until you look beneath the surface. As you explore the website, you get a sense that not everything is right in this neighborhood. Links don't seem to work as they should, text appears to be overlapping, out of alignment, or hidden entirely, and there's this weird okay. image of Wally just looking mighty sus. That's not sinister at all. There he is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this isn't just a website, it's an ARG, an artfully realized gallery full of drawings, cardboard models, vinyl records, a physical puppet, and of course, puzzles wait if this is just like like a website thing like a website game I, I that would be interesting to test out would you guys want me to play this or explore this realm of creepy ness lots of puzzles and they're all hiding a suspicious amount of lore something sinister is going on in this neighborhood Matt Pat's favorite dessert is lore. And we're about to figure out what it is. But before we dive in, I do want to take a minute to remind everyone that while, yes, websites with secrets like this are exciting, we have to be kind and respectful when oh, we explore. Gonna be a, welcome Home's creator Clown has been very explicit in saying that they welcome theorizing, but they also ask that you don't share them on any theory videos for fear of the video influencing their intended narrative. Additionally, as ah. always with any website-based mystery, remember our five rules that we've covered in past episodes. Never publish private information, stick to public available information do not trespass do not contact or harass individuals and keep the discussion centralized to help with that there's going to be a link in the description for the mega thread on the game theorist subreddit but these okay. rules are especially true for this particular i do recall him saying that for like i think what was it i think bendy i think there was like game theorist said that he it was not really like outright him but it was the theory community and stuff like that besides like uh stuff and also I think some other possibly indie horror game. I just can't remember which, but I know that I think Bendy was a big one that he thinks he influenced in the direction or something. I, I just remember something that Matt Pat talked about in the past series. Rumors have been circulating in the community that Clown has actually been doxxed. Fortunately, they put out a post confirming that that isn't true. That said, let's just keep it that way. Secondly, as I mentioned before, online discussion about this world and its characters has blown up across TikTok and YouTube. And because of how quickly and aggressively this is gaining popularity, Clown's currently taking a step back from posting and creating right now. There's even a deleted post saying how overwhelmed they feel by the amount of attention the project's received. So just as a reminder, stay patient stay polite you know and this the reason why this is probably getting so much is because the the creators of other franchises <clears throat> puppy playtime <coughs> five nights at freddy's <coughs> uh, uh, other fucking things uh are not producing uh, the content that people are waiting for patiently and they're taking too long producing and or releasing the products even though they do need to uh they need to be made and properly sent out where there's no glitches but still they're taking fucking forever and do not pressure anyone into making more content be kind and respectful members of the community and clown if you're watching which you shouldn't be since this is a theory video but still if you are just want to say take your time there is absolutely zero pressure for you to make anything anytime soon i mean let's be honest it took me seven years to finally launch style theory creating something <laughs> cool takes time one creator to another just when it comes to animations and everything else, I don't disagree that games need to be released without bugs, so I don't mind waiting longer, but to be dead silent is another thing, though. I wouldn't mind a little bit of something just to, just to say, okay, there's hope soon, but at the same time, I'm still not trying to rush a person myself.
Just keep doing what you're doing and put your own mental health first. All right. So with all of us true. on the same page, let's actually look at some of the clues that I mentioned that earlier. That is 100 When you visit the true, homepage, though. you'll find Wally no sitting on a rock. Feel. And below him is a newsletter explaining the, the latest updates. However, if you look closely, you'll see something that's quite literally out of place. The letter Y in the word your is sitting much higher than the rest of the text. Now, you might think that this is just a website glitch, something that the creator didn't realize was there. But when you look through the rest of the site, you find the same thing happening over and over again. One misplaced okay. letter on practically every every main page. The W in Wally on the welcome home page is slightly too low. There's an X in the word expand on the neighborhood page, an O in the title of the about us page, an E in the news logo, and a V in the I love you message over in the guest book. What do you do okay. with all these letters? Well, you go back up to the URL bar and type in clownillustration.com slash and then the letters Y-W-X-O-E-V. That then brings you to a brand new page that contains the image of a house with a gif of eyes over top. These eyes appear to be that of our lead character, Wally. Eventually, the gift stops, showing only an image of his eyes wide open with dilated pupils staring right at us. Which I gotta say is making me all sorts of uncomfortable, but this <laughs> isn't the only secret that those letters unlock. Notice the title tab of the website here. It says try again. Clearly, there are right and wrong combinations of all these letters. By putting oh. in W-O-X-Y-V-E, we get to see a page of the show's script, along with a gift that shows Wally's eyes looking at us. And if you okay. try E-O-V-W-X-Y, you'll see a video of a TV I love it. When they static, do but when this the 40 much. second mark hits, suddenly there's a flash of those same eyes staring at us through the screen. Something tells me we're being watched. And it's at this moment that you notice the designs at the This is why I love watching MatPad stuff because I'm intrigued, but I would never go out of my way to do shit like this or figure this stuff out. I am so glad MatPat does a lot of this stuff for us. Edges of the website. What initially seems like loud flower power style designs of the 60s are actually a mass of eyes constantly watching us as we scroll through the website's various pages. Oh, but this wow. doesn't end with it just watching us. Whatever this thing is, it's also trying to communicate with us. On the welcome homepage, we find lots of images that are noted as being restored remnants and reproduced pieces. This is where we find that creepy image of Wally closing his window shutters. But there's also another image that's of interest. Here. There's what appears to be a newspaper clipping with a scene of the characters Frank and Eddie delivering mail. However, if you look closely, you'll see part of the article is visible on the right-hand side. Take an even closer look, and you'll notice at the bottom, the first letters of each line spell out something. Hello, you. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, that's ominous. <laughs> to us, exactly? It's also not the only time that we see messages like this either. If you head on over to the About Us page, the page where we learn about okay. the recreation efforts, we can see a picture of Frank's head mechanics. But in the corner of that image is a set of books, all with writing on the spine. The first couple are obvious, and again, give off that creepy vibe of something trying to communicate with us. Hello, it's you know who. But it's the last books that really get into uncomfortable territory. They read, I'm your neighbor. Do you know about me? You do. I've seen you. So we know someone's watching oh, us. That's we know they're creepy. trying to communicate with us, but who are they? They assume that we know them, so we should probably figure out who's on the other side of those book spines. Feels very much like someone from the show in some way, calling us neighbor. It's very Mr. Rogers-esque like a TV host addressing the people that are watching. Breaking the fourth wall YouTube style. Could it be <laughs> that the reason that we saw the eyes of Wally on those mysterious pages was because he's the one trying to communicate with us? Well, the only way to know for sure is to keep on searching. And I want to go all the way to the end, to the page that's filled with probably the most lore of this entire project, the guest book. Ooh. This guest book is for people visiting the site to leave comments, but that's not the only thing the page displays. Sometimes there are drawings next to those comments which aren't made by regular users like you and me. Someone, or something, has drawn them on the page. Most likely the one who's been watching us this entire time. And this is where things start to get even cooler. Sure, having even more pictures of eyeballs drawn next to comments is unsettling, but that's not all they're doing. If you open the image in a new tab, you'll find almost all of them have interesting file names. For example, on page oh, three, the there's hell? a spiral drawn in red, yellow, and blue crayon next to a comment that asks, why do you like eye contact? And if you open that image up in a new tab, you find the response, so you will know I am looking at you, neighbor. I am talking to you. So whoever's... Oh, that's so creepy and cool! Drawing these images is definitely connected to everything else that's been going on around here. So, who is it? Well, we get clues to that answer throughout the rest of the guest book. For instance, there's one comment that says, Wally's my favorite, to which the website drawings reply, I am your favorite too. Awfully presumptuous of you there, mystery host. So we know that Wally and this character aren't one and the same, except maybe okay. they are. In another comment that says, I hope Wally knows that he's my favorite, the title tab says, I'm your favorite, that makes me happy. So, are you or are you not Wally? Well, it seems like the answer may actually be yes and no. When you go to the last page of the guest... Split personality? 
book, you're presented with a lot of blank entries. Same which, person, I don't but know about you, but feels kind awfully of thing? suspicious. So if you hit select all in one of those empty guest book entries, it suddenly reveals that there is hidden text here from Wally that reads, you're looking for me. Silly, silly. But right next to it is another entry, also credited to Wally, except this time it's like somebody wrote his name and then put it through a SpongeBob meme filter. It says, you won't write back. The fact that both of these are identifying as Wally, just with one of them corrupted, it seems to indicate that there are either two entities inside our beloved host, or there are two Wallys running around. The real Wally ah. and something else. But what? Well, at I the bottom like of be each better webpage, all the characters sign the their name, each with a unique signature. But to borrow a phrase from a rival kid's show, one of these things is not like the other. Or should I say, two of these things are actually exactly like the other. Notice how the writing for home yeah, the, is the same two. as the handwriting I, saw, I, I noticed that. Same red crayon, same style of writing, especially when you compare the M and the W. Wally and home are connected in some way. They seem to be one and the same. This is also heavily supported by another one of the guestbook pages. On page 5, one comment says that Wally is such a doll, and the website's response is a picture of an eye titled, no, a puppet. It's a double meaning. Not only is Wally the character a physical puppet, but he seems to be getting puppeteered by something else behind the scenes pulling the strings. Whoever or whatever home is supposed to be. There are a lot of other messages hidden throughout the guest book, and I'd encourage you to go and check them out, but I figured I'd try somewhere else to see if it would yield different results, and lo and behold, my hunch was correct. This site is hiding a ton of information in very unique places. On the The Neighbor page, you can actually click on the houses to learn about each of the characters. Each one gets themselves an illustration and then a page on the right with their key character traits. However, if you do what I tend to do with these types of mysteries and just click on everything in sight in the hopes of finding clues, you'll actually be rewarded. If you happen to click on the word you really? and the word your at the top of the page, you'll be taken to a brand new screen. One that has a description card like all the other characters, only this time it has you. Yes, you, the one watching. And you got yourself a single line in your description, Wally is your best friend. I don't know, that along with the <laughs> that's guest creepy. book neighbor, it's kind of giving me vibes of a cult, where everyone refers to each other as brothers and sisters, or in this case, neighbors, rather than by their actual names. Speaking of weird details in the character descriptions, all of these characters, minus Wally, don't originate from home. They all moved here from somewhere else. They all have friends and family. We even see a picture of Julie and her siblings elsewhere on the site, but they don't exist inside of home, which again, gives me some creepy cult vibes, where members are encouraged to abandon their former lives and move to live with other cult members in a closed off community. Oh, wow. And given that Wally is the one that never had yeah. to move, my gut's telling me that he's the one in charge. My gut seems to be right. As I looked through more and more of the images on the welcome page, I noticed one very specific and tiny detail. The characters all wear badges, pins, or cufflinks related to their personality and traits. Some are pretty darn obvious. Eddie has a male pin on his hat because he's a mailman. Sally has a star and moon pin on her because she is literally a star. But what about dear old Wally? I expected to see him with some kind of art based pin paintbrush, easel, crayon, but those were nowhere to be found. Yeah, Instead, there are none. two images on the website that show what cufflinks Wally's wearing, and they're oh, pretty surprising. I didn't those. He's wearing crosses, which doesn't really feel all that thematic for a character who's a painter. Instead, that's the sort of thing that you get out of God a religious damn it, it's a, a vibe that starts to get even stronger if you go it back is. to the earliest days of the website. Now, this website was first launched back in February of 2022, and back then, it looked very different than it does today. At one point, there was this image of Wally staring directly at us with a simple phrase above his head, hold my gaze and follow me. I don't know about you, but if Mr. Rogers started speaking to me that way, I'd be catching the first trolley on out of here. No, this sort of phrasing is very similar to the style of speech used by religious figures, especially Jesus from various passages throughout the Bible where he would ask his disciples to follow him. It's also a tactic used by cult leaders as they indoctrinate new members. But bringing it all back around to the current website, if you visit oh, that God. neighborhood page that I mentioned earlier and take an even closer look, you might notice that Wally's house has this pulsating black goo coming out from underneath it. And with internet projects like these, we all know that black goo is never a good sign. To my surprise, that nope. space below the house was clickable. So I clicked it, and I got this. A black image of Wally drawn in red, kneeling before the eye of his house with one hand raised. I mean, this is the most creepy thing that we've come across so far. And it gets even creepier, because the title tab text is listed as, so below. If those two words don't immediately ring alarm bells for you, that's fine. To me, though, as someone who's done his fair share of weird internet research, that phrase always leads to one thing. It's actually half of a phrase that you see a lot. As above, so below. A phrase that's usually used in conjunction with occult practices. Not just any practices either. More often than not, the phrase is associated with one particular image of the day
deity Baphomet. Baphomet was worshipped as a deity by groups like the Knights Templar, and represented balance, with the two finger salutes pointing up and down, hence as above, so below. It's a symbol of mercy and justice, as well as explaining the idea that if things are a certain way in the heavens, so shall they be down here on Earth. And fun fact, if you take a look at Clown's professional art page, there's actually an image of Wally pulling the exact same pose. Oh, now it's wow. at this point that I should probably mention that all the stuff on that particular website isn't considered canon by Clown. Quote, everything outside of the website, especially anything prior to the beginning of January of 2022, is conceptual artwork. These items are not solidified any longer, such as Wally's cufflinks, which no longer adorns crosses on the outside. So I would not regard these very old pieces as anything to consider. Welcome Home has been completely overhauled since then. So that Baphomet image is definitely not canon, but it does seem like some of these ideas have persevered throughout the various updates of the website. Hence that other image still being titled So Below, despite various website updates. I've also seen okay. comments saying that this statement disproves any sort of religious or cult theory, but looking at these words from Clown, which are the only comments that I could find related to this particular topic, I don't think that's actually what they're saying. So back to As Above, So Below. Baphomet wasn't only depicted in that one pose, he was also regularly depicted with children surrounding him, because the idea was that children wouldn't immediately see him as the devil. They should be allowed to make their own decisions rather than being told how to interpret something. Specifically, the worshippers of Baphomet were against the indoctrination of children, which is pretty darn interesting if Wally is now fulfilling the role as some sort of puppet deity. In short, all of this seems to imply that just like Baphomet represented balance, Wally and Home also balance each other out. Wally is the friendly childhood host, and Home is the darkly chaotic, perhaps even evil, monster lurking within. On the About Us page, we see some of the well, artwork Well, also, just in general, your home, the... The, the, the fucking signature thing. It's being received from an anonymous source, but the original artwork always arrives in a damaged state, covered in red, yellow, and blue paint, the colors that Wally uses. Again, showing us that this isn't just a show, but that the real puppet of Wally is alive and purposely trying to reach out to us. On that same page, there's an FAQ section where there's some text that overlaps. Text that reads, When I unwrapped the first letter, I felt it. I heard it. Open. Open open. I want it out. I'm going to get it out. What does he mean, get it out? Are you talking about home? We see the same type of language on the news page, where we're told that a museum curator is wanting to put on an exhibition for all these findings. Together, we will get it out. We will get everything out. You will see as we do, neighbor. Now that right there, that sounds like indoctrination at its finest. Yeah. Wally has managed to brainwash these people. And now, thanks to this exhibition, they're going to be able to spread the word of this show, this cult, to the masses. The links page, for instance, is literally labeled as spread the good word. The doctrine of Wally. But what exactly is Wally's doctrine? On the surface, thanks to that Baphomet imagery, you might think that Wally is both a deity and leader, but I don't think that's the case. As we've talked about multiple times now, home appears to be alive, and it's considered the ninth neighbor of Welcome Home. None of the other houses in this neighborhood are alive, it's just home. And given that it's Wally's house and he's some kind of a cult leader, that strikes me as fairly suspicious. Especially yeah. when you check out the page on your phone. Because the image has to be resized for a mobile device, home is no longer longer in the middle of the page. It's higher, and as a result, you see what's behind it. A black void with a single spiral in the middle. Just like the spirals that Wally is drawing into the guest book. And while that is oh. certainly disturbing, look at the whole image. The colorful trees in the middle, the paths leading to and from the void and all around the neighborhood. It almost looks like a person lifting their arms in an act of worship. Wally isn't the deity here. Home is. Wally is just the good and faithful servant. They are all welcoming home. If you remember the letters that we used to find some of those hidden web pages, Pages at the top of the episode, there's a couple that I neglected to mention. If you put them in the order YXWVOE, you'll find an error page. But click the telephone, and suddenly we're treated to a rendition of the song Beautiful Dreamer. The person who made all this and did all this had some really interesting ways to, like, th this is a theorist's, like, dream right now this is this is what matt pat probably has been wanting this has got him hooked <laughs> In the world of Welcome Home, night symbolized the end of the episode. The neighbors would all go home, the children would turn off their TVs, and the crew would retire for the night. The show, however, has been off the air for a very long time, nearly 50 years. And so it's time for Home, the beautiful dreamer, to awaken once more. And we can be sure that this song is directed at home, because while the song's currently labeled as singing MP3 in the files, the webpage is labeled duet. But there's only one person oh. singing, or is there? If you listen a little further to the end of the song, we hear some banging sounds. 
If we read Wally's bio, it says that home talks using onomatopoeias. So these banging sounds are home responding to Wally's song, slowly awakening, ready for revival. We don't exactly know what happened in 1974, what caused the show to shut down and the production company to fall silent, but I've seen my fair share of indie horror to know that when you got sentient mascots and demonic entities, it's not gonna be a good one. Maybe the production <laughs> company fell silent because many of their workers were killed. Maybe a ton of children died. Maybe Wally was able to possess them through the TV to serve whatever home's motivation is. Whatever happened back then, it is gonna happen again now that this exhibition is planned. Wally is regaining his influence, sharing these images to gather people together, and slowly he will Okay, so this is not really a video game thing, but I'm I'm still intrigued on this. And there's more videos out there and stuff like that you guys think I would I would like to check out. Well, other theories or animations or songs and stuff like that. Because that was a few things I did notice that some uh, songs have been popping up that involve Welcome Home. Home to continue whatever their plan was half a century ago. The one thing I do know is that this story of Welcome Home has me hooked. Especially when you consider that Clown has oh, said definitely. that we're only 5% into the project. So until 5%? more is revealed, we wait. I suppose you could consider us the Neighborhood Walk. But hey, that's <laughs> just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Holy shit. This is interesting. I like the concept. I will definitely have to be checking out more animations, indoor songs, and stuff like that, and uh, maybe other. If you guys want, uh, post your ideas of like reaction ideas towards more theory videos and other things. And I'll definitely be looking out for more theories by Matt Patch on and whatnot. So. I am intrigued, and I can't wait for more. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this reaction, and uh, I gotta go do some stuff. This will be probably, if if anything, this is probably the third video today that's going out. So, I hope you guys enjoyed all the videos that I uploaded today. I did do a special one earlier today that involved the last part of our Pokemon series with me, my friend Toon, uh, Pilk, and my friend, uh, all, all my friends, basically, and, of course, King. So check out that stuff. See you guys in the next video. And until then, later.